the 6-kilo-class submarines in Russia's Black Sea Fleet would pose the biggest threat to convoys, given that they are quiet and well-armed. They could attack with torpedoes, launch cruise missiles from outside the escort's effective reach, or lay mines in the path of a convoy. Ground-based anti-ship missiles from Crimea could snipe at ships. And a major battle would likely erupt as NATO tried to suppress the Russian missile batteries. Other Russian forces would be unlikely to participate in any substantial way. Russia's weak surface forces would not be a match for even a limited NATO escort. They could try sniping at convoy ships from close to shore. But that would expose them to Ukrainian anti-ship missiles and NATO air power. Russia could also use its substantial air forces. But these are fully engaged in the ground war and have performed poorly thus far. If Russia chose to contest the convoys, the world would likely find out when explosions rocked a grain ship. Russia would deny any involvement, claiming that the ship had hit a Ukrainian mine. NATO could accept Russian denials of involvement and try a different approach. Should it wish to avoid further escalation. Alternatively, it could begin a naval campaign to clear mines and defeat Russian submarines. In that case, a naval shooting war would ensue. Such a war would devolve into a series of convoy battles as NATO worked to push cargo vessels through the Russian blockade. There would be ample opportunity for such skirmishes given that a convoy sailing at a standard 12 knots would take about a day to sail from the port of Odessa to the Straits. The outcome of such a battle would be uncertain because there is no modern precedent for a naval engagement between peer competitors. Unlike warfare in the air and on the ground, few naval engagements have occurred since the end of World War II. It is likely that NATO, with its powerful ships and its massive air power advantage, would prevail, perhaps quickly. Perhaps after an extended series of convoy battles. But many NATO nations will not have the stomach for a direct military confrontation with Russia and all the risks of escalation that would inevitably bring. Even if it could break Moscow's blockade and relieve the mounting food crisis. A less confrontational option would be to enlist non-NATO countries to provide escorts and cargo ships. A country like Egypt, which depends heavily on imported grain, might be willing to take on the risks a convoy would entail. This indirect approach would avoid a Russian narrative of NATO aggression and lean heavily on the humanitarian argument of relieving hunger. Ultimately, however, this is a diplomatic calculation because these third-party countries likely do not have the military capability to fight Russia effectively. Ukraine could transport grain by rail to the Romanian port of Kostanta, which is only 190 miles from Odessa, and from there, ship it by sea using third-party vessels. This would avoid any direct connection with Ukraine in the war, thus allowing Russia some distance if it wanted to avoid a confrontation. Russia might not be willing to let such a scheme slide. However, in the face of sanctions against its own exports, the United States could take a direct approach by registering, or reflagging, merchant vessels as American ships. So that Russia would have to attack U.S. vessels to enforce the blockade. There is a precedent for such a move. The United States reflagged Kuwaiti oil tankers to provide U.S. naval protection during the Iran-Iraq War in 1987-88 to ensure the continued flow of oil. This is a risky strategy, though, even during the tanker war. These reflagged tankers were subject to sniping and mining, and they needed escorts as a result, regardless of their redesignated nationality. Russia likewise might not be deterred by this tactic. There are also diplomatic options that could be worth pursuing. Putin, for instance, has stated that Russia would allow shipments from Ukraine under some conditions. One could imagine a ship-for-ship -ship agreement, in which one merchant ship from Ukraine would be allowed to engage in international trade in exchange for one ship from Russia doing so. This tit-for-tat proposal has gained little traction, 
given that it would provide Russia substantial financial resources and constitute a precedent for lifting sanctions. Still, Western nations have been reluctant to risk military confrontation, and the global food situation will grow increasingly dire. A diplomatic approach might win international support over time. Countries depending on Ukrainian and Russian grain likely have enough supplies to last for a while, and their stores are being boosted by Western aid in the short term. There are no current reports of hunger. But over the longer term, the status quo will prove untenable. Should the war continue, dwindling supplies will cause shortages and food riots that could lead to social and regime instability. The West will face mounting pressure to act. Global hunger may not be acute yet. But when it hits, it will hit hard. It is the responsibility of NATO and the West to have a plan in place before the shortage becomes a crisis. That's all for now.